Hi, it's Dr. Lori. This is Ask Dr. Lori Live. Thanks for being with me. My guests are here from all over. I'm excited to see their art, antiques, and collectibles. I'm happy that all of you are here. I'm going to make a reminder that you should sign up for the newsletter. And of course, the newsletter has lots in it that a lot of you are missing. You know why? You're not updating your profile. You have to go in and basically say, I want to get this alert. I want to get that alert. I want to do this. I want to find out that. The newsletter is easy to sign up for, and it's free, 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 free. It's free. Okay. So there's no reason why you shouldn't sign up for it. Just put in your email there, click on it, and then when it goes out, we'll send it to you. For those of you saying, she always says about the newsletter, the newsletter, the newsletter. I'm tired of hearing about the newsletter. There are a lot of people who are new to the channel who, again, are just starting, are just here the first time. They don't know that they could sign up for a free newsletter. So I want them to know about it, of course. And of course, the information that's in the newsletter can help you. You know, there's everything from selling tips to how do you recognize a particular piece of quality glass or ceramic or pottery or, um, of course, jewelry or artwork or, you know, it's going to help you. My guests are here. We're going to talk about their art, antiques, and collectibles. And if you have questions about the objects that I'm talking about with my guests, ask them in the comments now, right? <laughs> ask them while we're actually talking about it. So that would be helpful. So let's start with the Fendi bag. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look at this Fendi bag. I like the jeans. I have to say I like the uh, the denim too. Hi, how are you? Good. Good. What's your name? Uh, Lavonna Eliasson. So, Lavonna, how did you acquire this piece? It's nice. Um, I found it at Goodwill. I used a, a, a little discount on it and gotten it for like 20 bucks at Goodwill. So, we're, are you curious as to whether or not it's an authentic Fendi bag or do you think it's a fake, a knockoff? Um. It looks like it's a real one. Okay. It's at. Are you surprised that it's that it was at Goodwill? Oh, very much. I've seen fake copy at that one. You're surprised <laughs> that that uh, it was at Goodwill. So you said you were going into the bag. You're going in there like you for, you wanted to tell me that it's got something specific on it, right? Uh, oh, so it's numbers, and then it's got. That as well. That has numbers. So the serial number actually embossed into the leather are some of the telltale signs of an authentic Fendi bag. And then you also have that that um, hologram, basically that other marker on the other side. Can I see the other side of the bag? There you go. That's what we want to see. We want to make sure that we're taking a good look. It looks like it's in very good condition, too. One of the things I want you to look for, and I always tell you things in lists, right, so you can remember what the characteristics are, right? Um, one yeah. of the things you want to look for is you want to look at the hardware and see whether or not the hardware is nice and strong. Does it look like it's going to break apart? Usually that's a telltale sign of something that isn't made of high quality. So I don't want you to pull too hard on it, but, yeah. you know, if you were to give it a tug, right, if you were doing a controlled tug, you're not yeah. going to have any problem with it, right? It's going to stay together pretty well. It's staying together pretty good. Okay. How about that clasp? How about when it closes? Does that, cl does that clasp make a nice definitive click? Yep. Okay. I like that too. Notice where the Fendi marks are. The logo marks are important to these particular pieces. This bag is an early 20th century, late, 19, late 1900s, early 2000s bag. And yep. um, no damage on the inside. You know, is there like an ink mark on the inside? Because you don't want any damage on the inside. And what kind of questions do the folks um, who are watching have? They can put those in the comments. It's pretty clean on the inside. Pretty clean on the inside. And speaking of clean on the inside, I want to thank you. And there's Pastor Hizaza. <laughs> She's so sweet. Um, I want to thank you for having a nice, clear background. Nothing in the background so I can see the object well. So that's great. Hey, where are you calling from? What part of the world are you in? Um, I'm in Chippewa Falls, Wisconsin. Okay, so Wisconsin. Okay, great. <laughs> so would you be surprised to know that that bag is worth about $600? Oh, wow. That's uh, more than 20 bucks. That's more than 20 bucks. You got it. It's a real bargain. <laughs> and that's based on actual sales where similar pieces have sold. Good to see you. Congratulations. Yep. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. That's a nice one. That's a nice one. Got to like it. Got to like it. So thanks so much for that. That was a fun one. Yeah, she was excited and she knew what to look for, right? 
My guests are here from all over. Oh, there's a person in a frame. It looks like it might be Marco <laughs> from Italy. I'm not really sure. And there is a piece that really looks like a piece of Murano glass. And there is a piece of jewelry, but I can't see all of it. It's kind of blurry. Can't really see it very well. Let's take a look. Let's take a look at Marco in the frame. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Marco. How are you? Fine. How you doing? I'm fine. You? How are things in Verona? It's got to be what? Two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning. What time is it? Two o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Oh, God, Marco, you're a good fan, aren't you? Yeah, Marco? yeah, yeah, yeah. How can I help you, honey? Yeah, I bought this frame at the thrift store for seven euro, around seven dollars. Okay. And it's it's green. It's, it's kind uh, of green and gold. Green and yeah. gold, right? Green, green and gold. gold. At mm -hmm. the back, it has this hook. It goes down downwards yes i see that okay uh, does it have the same hook on the other on the bottom what would be the bottom no no there is no hook on the bottom no okay okay all right it's like this it's like gold green it has little steps and it, ha it has like a net like it is like a painting like a like little net here you see like a crosshatch design yeah, right, little right, x's right. Yeah. yeah. It's so a bit it's green, damaged. and then it's got. So let's look at your frame. So because frames can be pretty valuable, and, and if you hold it right there for me, yeah. Thank you, darling. Here's a couple of things that we're going to see. First of all, if you don't know Marco, Marco's been on the show many times, and he's a lovely guy, and he he's in near Verona, Italy. Yeah. Am I close? Yeah. Or northern yeah, right, Italy. Right. Near Verona and Venice between, yeah. Okay, Verona and Venice. Okay, so nice place. There's nothing wrong with Italy. Yeah, I, course, my yeah. favorite place, one of my favorite places. So I'll say that. But this particular thing, notice the mitered corners, which are very typical of the frame, right? Now, notice also that this is called a wood composition, and then it is a gilt frame. So sometimes they call them wood gilt, and they forget yeah. the composition matter. If you look at that that part of that frame that looks like it has a little nick taken out of it, like a little bite taken out of it, actually. Yeah, yeah. Um, if you right there, right there, okay. If you look at that, which is toward the nope, nope, not the mitered, but over toward oh, uh, that right there. You got it, Marco. You're so good. <laughs> so right there, Marco's frame has something called composition matter on it. What that means is there's wood, right, and then they carve what's called the OG style curve. O G E E is the term. You don't have to know that's an art history term. But, you know, the OG term. And then what you have, that's the wood. And then what they do is then they'll put a layer of what's called composition matter or compost, C-O-M-P-O-S, composition matter. Um, and that's like plaster of Paris. It's kind of like a gooey, gritty kind of ceramic, not really ceramic, but kind of a plastery kind of thing. Then they go over it with red, the color red paint, because your eyes attracted to red, no matter what, attracted to red. And then they go and start doing what's called water gilding, um, gold leaf application, and paint. So the green paint is introduced in the late part of the 19th century, and it's very popular between about 1885 and about 1910. So there's your time period for your frame, oh. right? What was in your frame? Excuse me. There was, yeah, there was something um, religious. But I think it was Jesus Christ, but it was all broken. So I took it away. Okay. So the, the hook that you yeah. said, the hook is going down and you're saying this hook is odd, right? Yeah, oftentimes, like yeah, oftentimes that hook, because it's a 19th century piece, was in fact the hook that was placed so you could, in, in exhibitions and in, in private homes, big stately homes, though, that had fine art in it, would have a hook like that because they would have a ribbon that would hang from basically a molding at the top of a wall, particularly in Europe, molding at the top of a wall, right? Think of a chair rail in the United States that's in your dining room, but put it at the top of the, of the ceiling, near the ceiling, like a, like a crown molding. And then they would, they would actually attach a ribbon and that ribbon would come down in like a V and then you could hook with that hook, the painting to that. So that's how we know it's 19th century. That's how we know what was there. The actual painting was not connected to that hook. The What was connected was the ribbon that you would display the hook on in a manor house, if you will. How big is the, the frame? Yes, so the measures are 36 centimeters okay. and 48 centimeters. Okay, so we have a pretty good standard frame because you can you can hear it that we've got the even numbers, right? On each, each dimension is an even number. I would say 
Yes, that's very good. So that element shows you that you have a late 19th, early 20th century frame and that the painting is all done by hand. So someone actually is, is putting in a lot of labor. You got a little bit of conservation yeah. restoration you've got to do, but you yeah. might be able to do that just with a little yeah. bit of gold leaf. Especially would... on the top, on the top. On right. the bottom, it's nice actually, not very bad. Not very side. bad. And then you can't see the bottom. Yeah, no one's looking under the frame, you know what I yeah, mean? They're not doing one of those. <laughs> I would say value on your piece, about $200, $210 just oh, for the frame. Good. So that's US dollars. I don't know what that is to euros. You're going to have to do all that. Yeah, more or less. Yeah, the same. Yeah. Yeah. But I'd okay. say about 210 Marco, good to see Thank you, you, darling. Thank you. Right. Nice to see you. Bye. Nice Bye. to see you. Go to bed. <laughs> Poor guy. He's up so late. But wanted to know about his frame. Yeah, frames can be valuable. And those are some of the characteristics you want to look for when it comes to frames. Thank you very much, Tanya. Thank you for the super sticker. Thank you all for the super chats and super stickers. I have this question for all of you. You've all been very, very polite and very nice, and I appreciate it. I, I will continue to, of course, appreciate this. Uh, some people don't like it when I thank everybody. Some people think it's great that I thank everybody um, individually by name. Some people say just do it at the end. What do you think? When do you think and do you think I should thank the folks who give super chats or super stickers. I want to remind those of you who give ch super chats and super stickers and those who don't, that basically the people who are giving super chats and super stickers help all of you. They help all of you because they're actually helping to financially support the channel and help me to make more videos and such, which can help all of you. So do you think I should thank everybody? You think it takes too much time? You think it's fine? You think it's necessary? What do you guys think? I'd like to know in the comments as well. And don't forget in the comments to tell me where the heck are you? So say hello from, I don't know, wherever you are. Um, thank you for the super sticker. I appreciate that one too. And I love to see the dogs. <laughs> I love to see the cats too. I, you know, I like the animals. The animals are a lot of fun. Uh, one of my, I had a, lo a long day, a fun day, but a long day of video calls. Um, and uh, one of the uh, video callers said, you never talk about birds, Dr. Lori. I have birds. I'm like, okay. <laughs> um, you know, and uh, that person actually collects a particular type of birds and then gives part of the proceeds from her uh, Etsy store to a, um, to a bird sanctuary that helps to uh, take care of birds. So I thought that was great. Undine. Undine was here. Uh, so thanks so much for being with me. Undine was with her, her mom today on a video call. Uh, my $200 in various thrift store estate sale purchases resulted in $2,700 in value. Well, you're looking for quality, you know, you're looking for quality and you're finding it. And I think that's great. So yeah, for a small investment, you're making much, much, much more on these particular pieces. So I'm very happy for you. Good for you. And it's always good to see you. And I love to see moms and daughters thrifting together. I love to see partners thrifting together. Um, you know, I, uh, Steve was back doing video calls. He's a great guy, an art deco collector. And he was fun. He was with one of his friends collecting. Deb, thank you very much. So you get annoyed when you give a super sticker and you don't get that. Oh, okay. So keep saying thanks. Oh, okay, great. My pumpkin pin, this little pumpkin pin is a um, enamel pumpkin pin. Um, this one, I don't always do seasonal, but you know, the whole table had to be seasonal for a television shoot. So, um, but the pumpkin pin is just that. Steph, thank you very much. So some people say yes. So she's, Deb's like, yes, you got to say thank you individually to everybody. Um, and then some people get very annoyed. Oh, you can do more appraisals. I want you to tell me more information. There's a lot of information on the newsletter, on the videos. Uh, of course, have you signed up for a class? Have you registered for a class? The classes are very popular. I love the classes. They're a lot of fun for me. They're a lot of fun for me. But this is fun too. My guests are here. Let's see what they've got. Let's see what they've got. I got used to my lighter hair. I don't know if you guys got used to it, but I did. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, we've got some earrings. I like the earrings, I gotta say. I like the smile too. And then we've got what might be a vase. Catherine's doing one of these with the vase. It <laughs> kind of looks like the wave, you know, football. Oh, and then that looks like, that That piece looks like a bracelet of garnets. You can't really tell. I don't know what to pick. Isn't that terrible? I don't know what to pick. I think I'm gonna pick the earrings. Can I pick the earrings? Yes. The earrings. Yes. Let's see. We might be able to get through everything. Hi. How are you? Hi, Dr. Lori. It's Roro. Hi, Roro. What's happening? These no, are Carnegie. Hattie Carnegie. It just says Carnegie on it. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about this. The the, the name is Hattie Carn. I always say Carnegie, and I think that might be oh, because okay. of. Okay. 
Uh, well, I don't. Uh, it I'm might sorry. be because no, 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 no. Let me get the statement out. It might be because of my connection with Pittsburgh. And Pittsburghers always say Carnegie, mm -hmm. you know. But okay. but Carnegie is not incorrect. So okay. they say Hattie Carnegie on them, and then uh, they are crystal, and they look like they have small paste pieces coming off them. They're hanging. Close. Are they? Are are they? Are they uh, clip-ons or are clip they pierced? Yeah. Do you want me to take one off? Yeah, take one off. Christine. I may not be able to get it back. <laughs> Carnegie or Carnegie? Carnegie, right? You know, the museum is, of okay. course, the Carnegie. So on the back, it says yep. Carnegie right there. I don't know if yep, you can see I that. Yep, I see it. Yep, I see it. Okay. okay. Other right, than you... that, I don't really see row, row, you got to give me a chance to get in here, baby. <laughs> okay. It's Saturday night. You got to let me talk. <laughs> then I'm going to let okay. you talk. Tell me, sweetheart. How did you acquire them? How much did you pay for them? I got them at a thrift shop. Um, I'm not sure, maybe $10, $15. Mm -hmm. I bought it with a whole bunch of other stuff, so I'm not really sure. Look at the back, too. Do you see the back? Yeah, I know what the back looks like. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I can see the back. Wanna... You're too close to the camera. Can you back and these up a are... bit? Oh, yeah, sure. These are pearls. They're they're rhinestones, and then on the end, they're pearls. I don't know I if they're see. real okay, pearls. So they're, but they're they paste. real. Basically, they're paste. They're faux pearls. They're not real. Really? They're not real. Hattie oh. Carnegie, they're not real. Definitely. Oh. They're, they're rhinestones. They're faux pearls. They're about uh -huh. two inches long. They're hanging. They're um, three and a half inches. Three I and apologize. Half. Three and a half inches long. And mm -hmm. um, I would say value on, mm, I would say value on the pair for Hattie Carnegie, about $175 for the pair. So good for you. Great. Great. Thanks, Roro. Thanks. Nice to see you, honey. Thank you. A, a little dizzy. Love you. I love you. A little dizzy. <laughs> so that's okay. Um, but uh, yes, those costume jewelry pieces, very nice, but not real pearls. Not real pearls. Um, but it would be nice if they were, but they're not. Mary Ann, thank you very much. Mary Ann. Yeah, that's nice. I appreciate that. I appreciate all of your help. Any help you guys can give, I appreciate it. And that's watching the channel and sharing the channel and, and watching videos and, and, you know, giving a chance to a video. A lot of people are just like, oh, I only like it when she talks about jewelry, or I only like it when she talks about glass, or I, I only like the lives, or I only like real bargains. Click on a Dr. Lori video and sit there and go, oh, wow, I am learning something new. You might you might really enjoy it. Um, so give it a shot. That would be great. Anyway, my guests are here. My guests are here, and uh, let's see what they've got. Let's see what they've got. Okay, it's looking like a ruffled bowl, and it's looking like it's got some... Um, hobnail pieces and then we've got the the levi's the levi's are nice gotta say the levi's are nice let's go with the levi's <laughs> hi how are you hi good dr Lori. what's your name i'm chris from hi, california chris. so what's happening in california so you're buying jeans to resell big bells big bells. vintage big bells bell bottoms big, big bell bottoms that's big too yeah right. What would you say, 70s, 1975, 1979, somewhere in there? Somewhere in there, yeah. Yeah, because of a couple of things. First of all, notice the orange label, the orange tag, right? Notice that it's got, I mean, all of the um, all of the labels, all the original. All of the labels, labels, yeah. Are still on them, and they're blue as blue could be. Mm -hmm. Wow, are they blue, so wonderful. Um, so now they also have a tag from a store on them. What store is it? Uh, it was called Gutman's. I couldn't see it. I couldn't see it. So it's a regular fit big bell. Now, are they really, are they really large or really small? What's the size? Are they 30 by 32? Like what are, what's the size? 33? They're 34 by 33. Oh, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. You want to have a standard size. You're looking at, at blue jeans. You're looking at, at denim, right? Denim in general, mm -hmm. you know, and I think of denim and I think of sort of the, the um, uh, the celebrity denim uh, auctions when they do a celebrity auction and it's like Brad Pitt's denim jacket went for five hundred thousand dollars <laughs> that kind of thing you know but these are very desirable in the market so a couple of things and I have appraised a lot of vintage clothes uh, we did some patchwork pants recently I don't know if you've seen those from the 1970s they went pretty high so first of all you want to have a as standard a size as possible like for example you wouldn't want a size that fits me because i'm unusually large right or you don't want something very very small you want sort of right down the middle if you can you want the dark ones you want of course to have um whether it's the red tag or the orange tag but you want to have the original tags you have more than just the original tag you have all of the store tags too and um 
And basically what I would say to these is they haven't been altered in any way. So it looks like they were just never sold. They were no, kind of manufactured no. and then they sat on a, they don't have bad creases either. You no. want to make sure there's no tears, no rips. You want to make sure that there's no creases, no damage from, you know, insects, bugs, moths, this kind of thing. So all no. of those things are what you're looking for. Um, look for the, in, do you have that interior small pocket? Mm -hmm. On the front pockets, is there a small pocket for, you know, pennies for change? Uh, no, I don't know. see one. These okay. aren't like the 501s. These are called 684s. Okay, that's fine. Big no, no, the 501s, many of them uh, from the 1970s would have that pocket. So that's why I was looking for that. So yours doesn't. Okay, um, how did you acquire them? I got four pair at an estate sale in a, in a closet there was a cabinet i opened it there were four pair and i paid five dollars a pair you bought them all huh yeah okay so um i'm sitting here thinking somewhere around eight hundred dollars to nine hundred and fifty dollars for the four pair i think you can probably get even on it and that's because this what this market is today um, I think you could get $300 a pair, but I think you'll work for it right now. So, oh, Terry Lynn asked if you could show the front. Sure. And then I'm going to say, okay, there's the front for Terry Lynn. I'm going to say $300 a pair. Congratulations for five bucks. That's a real bargain. <laughs> okay. Here. Thank you, Dr. Lori. You're welcome, honey. And now you know what to look for when you're looking at vintage denim, right? So also don't forget about, of course, the Levi's names, you know, brands, brand names speak volumes. So that's great. That's really great. Thank you, Lori. Thank you for supporting the channel. I appreciate all that you do. I want to hear from you guys in social media. I haven't heard any questions. I appreciate that. And I want to know what you think. Should I ask? Thank you. Should I thank you all at the end? What should I do? So help me out. And then questions about the objects that we've got. So let's see what else I've got. Janice, I appreciate your support. So we've got guests here from all over. Let's see what they've got. Oh, goodness. We've got a lot to do, a lot to talk about. Don't forget about collaborations. If there's, of course, some other channel that you watch all the time and you're thinking, hey, you know, I'd really like to, uh, I'd really like to see Dr. Lori with one of my favorite channels, have them get in touch with me. Maybe we'll do a collaboration on the channel. So that would be a lot of fun too. All right. So we've got a piece of cased glass, kind of blurry, kind of hard to see her. That connection may not be so good. And then I've got some mysterious, I don't know what's happening. There's no person there. <laughs> and then I have um, the piece that is a, right, so I think let's talk about this bracelet that looks like it could be garnets. Can we take a look at that bracelet? It's on a white background. Not great view either. All right. Hi, how are you? Good. How are you, Dr. Lori? What's your name, sweetheart? Kelly. Hi, Kelly. Where are you in the world? I'm in Indiana, Muncie, Indiana. Muncie, Indiana. Okay. Yeah. Can you give me a tilt on this? You know, you're holding this up like like this. Can you tilt down like that a little bit? There you go. Yeah. You're not, mm, there it is. There it is. I'm trying to see a little garnets. How'd you acquire them? How'd you acquire uh, I got it from this guy who does flea markets and antique stuff. Okay. Is it marked? Yes, it's marked uh, like a triangle and then like one four G or RGB P on the clasp. And it's very dainty, very fragile. And I, the think back is solid. I think they're garnets and I think I think it's garnet flowers, right? All uh -huh. set. And then I think it is in fact gold plated. I think okay. there's a plating to that. And that and piece, let show me the other side now that you have it up there. Yeah. A little bit more light coming in. Just turn it over so I can see the front. Okay. Because I'm looking at the back. There you go. Nice. So it's a nice bracelet. It's got a good clasp. I would say it probably dates to any time between 1930 and 1950. And value on that piece, about $100. Nice. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Thank you, darling. Thank yeah, garnets from my birthstone. What's your birthstone? Let's see. No questions on that. Just like, that's what it is. <laughs> so that's what we're looking at. Uh, without a machine and looper, how can you identify a ruby and a diamond? Okay, diamonds sparkle, hon. Diamonds have fire, they sparkle. And if that thing doesn't sparkle, let me tell you, it's not a diamond. And they sparkle differently from crystals or rhinestones or others. You should get a loop. It's very inexpensive. I recommend them on my specials and shop page at drlaurieve.com. 
scroll down. It'll say, go shopping now. Click on that. It's going to take you to the page where I show you my recommended products. And, and then basically it's right there on the specials and shop page, which is on the home page of our website, drlorev.com. Go there, click on it. It will take you to the website. And then I get, uh, then you can buy the actual, the actual piece. I think it's between 10 or 15 bucks. It's not a lot for a loop. A loop is worth it. It's a money magnet. You need it. That's it. It's just that simple. Um, and having said that I do get compensation. If you purchase one of my recommended products, it helps of course, support the channel. Now, a couple of other things about that. So it will sparkle. I mean, you'll tell a diamond. The other thing I always tell all of you, go look at a real diamond and look at it. You know, your brain will take a picture and it will remember what it looks like. Rubies are different from garnets, right? And they're a little bit more of an acquired view. Um, having said that, it's easy to, to identify. And I teach you this if you watch the videos. I've talked about a lot of rubies, a lot of diamonds. I've shown you these kinds of characteristics. So do that. But I thank you for that question. I appreciate that. Um, hi, Don. What percentage is gold shell yellow topaz November 14th? I don't know what this means. <laughs> what percentage is gold shell yellow topaz November 14th? I don't know, Don. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Can you clarify your question, sweetie? Clarify your question. And thank you for the super chat. Uh, the super chat. I'd like to answer your question. Um, you know, so hopefully you can clarify it. Um, there are many different amounts of uh, gold in carat weight, uh, in carat fineness, not in carat weight. So, um, you know, there's 10 karat gold and there's 14 karat gold and 18 karat gold and such. So, but my guests are here. Let's see what they've got. Let's see what they've got. I've got a lot of pumpkins. You've got a lot of stuff. <laughs> and there we go. Let's see. So that looks like a reticulated or punched out piece of pottery. And then we've got this um, teardrop glass bud vase. Let's take a look at that. Oh, and the puppy's there. Oh, I know you're trying to bribe me with the dogs. I know what you're doing. <laughs> You're so cute. I want to talk to Catherine and her vase. Uh, it's so funny. But I do love to see the pets. I'm going to have to bring my pets into the studio and show you all my pets one of these days. Hi, Catherine. What's happening in Wisconsin? Hey, good to see you. It's nice to see you. Catherine and I had a video call today. So tell me about this. What's this? This is not your typical thing, right, Catherine? Catherine's usually looking for Native American jewelry. <laughs> yeah, this is a piece of Baccarat. Piece of Baccarat, is it marked Baccarat on the bottom? Yes, it is. Have you found others that have, okay, this is the Baccarat mark. See this lovely mark? It's a nice, you know, you gotta like the French for this. <laughs> it's a nice, bold, large mark. You can't really miss it. And it says Baccarat, and this is made in France, usually, or France. Now, a couple things, sorry, my nose got itchy. So a couple of things about it. Very, very clear, so you get the contrast at the bottom. Frosted cased glass, so if you hold it upright, you can see the interior is cased. It's a little bud vase. Notice that element at the top that it's um, on an angle, right? That's also characteristic of the modernist line for Baccarat. Um, so how much did you pay for it? So I'm talking about high quality uh, crystal here now. Uh, Baccarat, uh, let's see, um, Val St. Lambert, um, San Louis, the big good names of French crystal. So Tell me, um, this particular piece, how'd you acquire it and what made you buy it? Uh, thrift store, about three bucks. Uh, I saw the symbol in the bottom. I saw the form, saw how clear it was. You talk about crystal and uh, saw the, the mark on the bottom. And when you, I know you've talked about Baccarat and I was like, I got to get this. <laughs> See, so you're in, so you're, if you're watching the channel and you're in the thrift store, I give you the basic treasure hunting map, right? I'm just like, here's what you got to find. If you find it, get it. So three bucks, you had no thought that, oh, I better not get this. I'm not really sure because you knew I had spoken about it, right? Yes. This is what I'm trying to do for all of you. And I do it on the newsletter too. So please sign up. In addition to that, this piece is what? Would you say it's six inches? Is it four inches? How tall? Uh, it's about, about, uh, about eight inches. It's about eight inches. That's wonderful. <laughs> it's reading smaller. I like it a lot. I would say value on that piece of Baccarat. Easily 200 bucks, easily. I, I mean, I might even go 225, but really not much more than that because of what the market is today. And the market is not all that great because of economic woes all over the world. Uh, I do think that we're gonna see a little up, you know, upswing 
as we get closer to holiday season. Thank you, Catherine. Good to see you. Two twenty-five on the back wrap for three bucks. Real bargains. Real bargains. Thank you. Congratulations. Yeah, stick with me, kids. I know what to do. So, and I thank all of you for super chats and super stickers, as well as for watching. Of course, I appreciate you sharing. I'm Dr. Lori. I'll see you next time.